What's going on, Giants fans? The NFL Draft is creeping up, and it is just around the corner. So I'm curious, who do you want at pick number five and seven? For every answer I get, I'm going to compile all the numbers, run the analytics, and see what two players were mentioned the most. So really help me out here. Get in the comment section. Let me know, who do you want the Giants to pick at number five and number seven? What's going on, Giants fans? Hope you're having a great day. You are watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Give me a follow on Twitter, at Marshall Green underscore. We are getting closer and closer to 1,000 followers, and I need your help. Not only we want Giants fans to follow me, so give me a follow, at Marshall Green underscore. In today's show, we're going to take a look at the latest Todd McShay NFL mock draft, who he had the Giants taking at number five and number seven. We'll break it down, give you some stats, and show you why he picked those players. The first four players he had going in the NFL draft Went like this. Aiden Hutchinson, number one of the Jags. Kyle Hamilton, the safety out of Notre Dame, going number two. That's the highest I've seen him go in any mock draft yet. Then a backbreaker for the Giants. Ika McQuanu and Evan Neal go number three and number four. And that's kind of the worst case scenario for the Giants. Those are my two top guys that I want at pick number five. And I'm kind of starting to feel it that it's not going to be there. So I'm starting to think of other ways and other people the Giants should pick at number five. But if the draft plays out like this, where Aiden Hutchinson goes one, Kyle Hamilton goes two, Ika Bukwanu goes three, and Evan Neal goes four, let me know. Take the seat of Joe Shane. Who are you picking in this situation? I'm very curious for who you have to say. I don't think you're expecting who Todd McShay is going to pick, so I want to hear your answers. Who do you pick at number five in this situation? Todd McShay had the Giants selecting Trayvon Walker, the edge rusher out of Georgia. And this guy was a combine winner, but he has been an NFL draft cycle winner. He is sprinting and skying through NFL draft boards. Just a couple weeks ago, he was a second round guy. And now almost on every mock draft that's coming out, he is the a top five pick. And in this draft, he's going number five to the New York Giants. Todd McShay, he was very complimentary about Trayvon Walker. This is what he had to say about him going to the Giants at number five. The Giants generated just 34 sacks, tied for 22nd in the NFL last season. And while Walker didn't pile on the QB hits at Georgia, just six sacks and 29 pressures last season, he was asked to do a lot of different things in a Bulldogs front seven that produced three other likely first-rounders. The 272-pound Walker had a terrific workout in Indy, running a 4 5 one second 40 270 pounds, 4 5 40 and a 6.89 three-cone drill. Fewer players I've ever evaluated can generate the power he does from the ground up. And that was on display with a 35 and a half inch vertical and a 10 foot three broad jump. Teamed up with Leonard Williams and Aziz Ojulari, Walker will only continue to develop while giving the Giants a dynamic edge rusher to spark the defense. And I think he gets a lot of this draft buzz because of what he did at the NFL Combine. He is one of the most athletic people at his, uh, his size to ever walk the halls at Indy and be tested. The thing is, the production doesn't necessarily match those numbers. There's a lot of you know big players on that uh, D-line in Georgia in that front seven, so you can't get to the quarterback every time, and you're asked to do different things. 33 tackles, 7.5 tackles for loss, just 6 sacks, but what he did in the national championship against Bama kind of showed what he had. He had six pressures, got after the quarterback a bunch, he takes on multiple blockers, he's great in the run game, he's great at getting after the passer, and just when you are that, at that size, 275 pounds, and you can run a 4-5-40, you are going to be one of the best athletes on this team and the National Football League, and I could see Joe Shane falling in love with this type of player. But I'm curious, how would you feel if the Giants drafted Trayvon Walker at number five. This is a name we haven't brought up on the show before because he hasn't really been mocked in top fives until following the NFL scouting combine. So let me know. Would you be happy if they drafted Walker? Type H. Or if you'd be mad and you're like, dude, this guy wasn't even a top 10 pick just a couple of weeks ago, go down and type M for mad. And I want to ask you guys and remind you guys to subscribe. NFL Free Agency is starting next week, and make sure you have your notifications turned on because this is the time of year where things just happen at random times, and we're going to be doing videos anytime news drops, so you're never going to miss it. Like if the Giants sign a free agent, you're going to want a video, and you're going to make sure want to make sure that you're one of the first to watch it. So subscribe, youtube.com slash TV, and we're trying to catch Steelers talk. We're about 2.5 thousand subscribers down, but it's the race to 10K. We're trying to get there by the NFL draft. So if you love the Giants and you're looking for a YouTube channel that does nothing but cover the New York Giants, this is your one-stop shop. Go down and hit that big red button. 
The sixth overall pick that Todd McShay had going in his most recent NFL mock draft was Charles Cross, the offensive tackle at a Mississippi State. So once again, the Giants are on the clock. Number seven, Joe Shane, Brian Dable. They're talking about what they want to do. So if the draft fell out like this, where Trayvon Walker went five to the Giants, Charles Cross went six to the Carolina Panthers, let me know. Who would you take in this situation? You got your edge rusher at number five. The best two offensive linemen have already gone. And Charles Cross just went six to the Carolina Panthers. So three offensive tackles have went in the top six. Giants have needs at receiver, corner, maybe another edge rusher. Offensive line, that's for damn sure. I know all of you agree with that. But let me know, who do you pick at number seven in this situation? Todd McShay, he had the Giants drafting my wide receiver one, Garrett Wilson, out of the Ohio State. I really like Garrett Wilson as a player. I think he's the best receiver in this class. I think he could be a number one receiver for 10 years in the National Football League. The thing is, I don't know if that's a big, as big of a need for the Giants at that position, but sometimes, and Joe Shane has said it, he's going to go best player available every single time because you can always sleep when you take good football players. You can never go wrong with taking good football players, to quote uh, Joe Shane. But Tom McShay, he had this and explained why he selected Garrett Wilson for the New York Giants at pick number seven. He said Kenny Galladay led the Giants in receiving last season with just 520 yards. Evan Ingram led the team in catches with all of 46, and he's heading to free agency. The next two on the list were running backs, and Sterling Shepard and Kadarius Toney each struggled to stay healthy. You get the point. With the top three linemen in this class off the board already, new GM Joe Shane and new coach Brian Dable can get quarterback Daniel Jones help in another fashion. Wilson has elite body control, 4-3-8 speed, and a big catch radius. It's hard to pass up on wide receiver ones, and that's what I think Garrett Wilson did. And what did Joe Shane and the Buffalo Bills do to help Josh Allen progress? They got him a number one wide receiver and Stephon Diggs. Maybe Garrett Wilson will be the Diggs to Jones like he was to Josh Allen, but let me know. Do you want the Giants to draft Garrett Wilson? If you do, go down and type Y for yes, or if you don't, go down and type N for no. One thing you're not going to want to pass up on is this awesome deal we got going on with our sports book and our proud sponsor of today's show, BetUS. When you go to chatsports.com slash bet and plug in the promo code chat125, deposit 100 bucks, they will match that with a 125% deposit bonus. So you'll have 225 bones in your account to bet with. You can bet on the NBA. You can bet on the MLB if they get ever back to playing games. Or you can bet on March Madness because it's right around the corner and their game's going to be going on all week. And there's nothing like enjoying a game when you have a little bit of lettuce on the line. You can bet on the Zags to win the chip at plus 450 or the Arizona Wildcats at plus 650. The Kentucky Wildcats are also plus 650. Or maybe you want to bet on Coach K in his last season with the Duke Blue Devils. Or maybe you think the Baylor Bears are going to go back to back. If you bet on the games, make sure you do it with BetUS, chatsports.com slash bet, promo code chat125. Garrett Wilson is my clear wide receiver one in this draft. He's a little undersized. But you can't teach 4-3-8 speed. And the type of body control he has is truly incredible. He can go up high point of ball at the be at better than almost anybody in this draft. What he did, remember that catch against Michigan in the corner where he went up and plucked it off the dude's head? Yeah, you could hear Randy Moss in the background saying, you got Moss. I don't think Sterling Shepard's going to be on this team next year, so Garrett Wilson could be a solid replacement. 70 grabs, over 1,000 yards last year, double-digit TDs. This guy is the real deal, and he can slide in and be that Sterling Shepard replacement because this wide receiver depth chart right now, it's pretty rough, man. I'm going to be honest. Kenny Galladay, I think, is going to have a bounce back year. I think him and Jones will have another year of chemistry under their belt. And I think Brian Dable is going to get the best out of Kenny Galladay. And I also think Mike Kafka will as well. It hurts. I don't think Sterling Shepard is going to be back unless he accepts that pay cut. I'm expecting a big jump for Kadarius Toney. Darius Slayton could be cut. His salary went from 500000 to about two and a half mil because of incentives. And that might be a cut candidate for the Giants. John Ross is a free agent. Colin Johnson will be back next, next year. Alex Bachman might be back as well. The thing is, the Giants wide receiver room is not that special. And if you could have a trio of Galladay, Tony, and Garrett Wilson for the years to come, I think Daniel Jones or whoever the next quarterback may be might be pretty ecstatic. But grade this mock draft for me. If the NFL draft fell out like this, where the Giants drafted Trayvon Walker at five and Garrett Wilson at seven, how would you be feeling? Grade it for me. Be the judge. Get out your red pen. Get in the comment section. Let me know. A, B, C, 
D or F. I give it about a B. He didn't f fix very many needs across the offensive line in the first round, but I think you might just take the best two players on the board, and I don't really have a problem with that because we know that's what Joe Shane is going to do. So let me know. Grade this mock draft, A, B, C, D, or F. And give me a follow on Twitter, guys. I've been trying. I've been begging. I've been pleading. I know I'm the guy asking for Twitter followers, but I need your help. I, I can't be a credible source on Twitter if I don't got at least a K followers. So help me out. Give me a follow at Marshall Green underscore. And if you give me a follow and send me a DM letting me you know you came from this mock draft video, I promise I'll give you a follow back.